little smile, a little faith, a little love, a little kindness. A little hand, a little help can be a miracle. Then the hand touch a life, we can change the whole. Good morning to you all. Keep quiet, please. As you are here now, you can see there are visitors and also representatives. So since you are here, you are the only one to be here. We ask Almighty Allah to help us for them to deliver what they are here for. It's just like an assignment. So please, listen attentively. Pay attention. Keep quiet. Understand what they are trying to tell you because this thing they are doing, they are 
responsibility of your parents at home. It takes you all this kind of thing. As you are approaching, uh, as you are approaching an age of, let's say, 15 upward, like almost all of you here now, you have started seeing something. Yes. And some of you have already reached a certain condition that you are just looking at us. And some of you even passed us that we are here to deliver the message to you. Yes. Because you have gone far. So please, please, we are begging you here. Know what you are doing. You are just looking at me. Huh? I'm saying the truth and reality. So you are reaching or you are approaching an edge that you're supposed to know what you are doing and how to take a good care of yourself. That's why they are here to help you, to guide you, and to protect you. The Almighty Allah help us all and also take them back home safely and help them to deliver their own responsibility. Thank you very much. Is that what you can do for your teacher? Enough. That's enough, that's enough. Okay, we who are here, yeah, I know you want to know us, isn't it? Uh -huh. We are Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. What did I say? Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. A sound clap for yourself. A sound clap is only one. Sound clap is what? Thank you very much. Okay, we are Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. And before I start introducing ourselves, I want to start with our founder and chairperson, that is uh, Princess Christabel Ijeoma Silverjohn. That is the national coordinator of our foundation. Please clap for her again. Okay. So I will begin from my left again. That's Madam Rookies. Please give her a sound clap. Mr. Solomon, please give him a sound clap. And this is. I'm talking, please read ahead. That's Jesse Toki. Thank you very much. Okay, and this is Hilda. Thank you very much. And our media people, Mr. Abiola Messi. Thank you. And Mr. Mr. Ayomide. Uh -huh. So that is us. So our founder is going to give us a brief introduction, just a brief address. Ma'am. My name is Christabel Silver John. I am the National Coordinator of Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. How many of you know what we have come to do here today? What is today? in a month, once in a year, to commemorate Menstrual Hygiene Day. And that is what we have come to do here in your school. Has any NGO come to do that for you before? Yes. Okay, so you are privileged to have us again to celebrate this year, 2024, Menstrual Hygiene Day with you. So without wasting much of your time, we're going to be talking, we want it to be very interactive. We're going to be talking on sexual abuse. We're going to talk about how you can, not just when you're menstruating, but how to keep yourself clean at all times. You know, you're girls. You don't want to come and sit somewhere and somebody's like shifting away from you. Would you want to, or you want to develop body odors? I know you're beautiful and you want to do that. So without wasting your time, I want to hand over the microphone to you. Can you please clap for her? Thank 
you very much, man. All right. We are here to celebrate menstrual hygiene day with all of us. But before I start saying anything, I want somebody to tell me the meaning of menstruation. Very briefly. Okay? I want one person to tell me the meaning of menstruation. Please come up here. Oh, sorry, let me use this as a diagram. Expression comes with the fire, the monthly flow of blood through the vagina of the Please, a sound clap for her. Wow. She gave a very direct definition. She said what? Menstruation is a monthly flow of blood from a girl type through the vagina. That means it's not, is it a disease? No. Uh, I thought it was a disease. Is it a cause? No. Is it because God hates women and he said, oh yeah, you this one because I need to understand menstruating? No. Okay. So it means there's a reason why girls menstruate, isn't it? Yes. Awesome. That, that means we are on the same page. It means that as a girl, between, some people start as early as, as 8, 8 o'clock. I say 8 o'clock now. 8 years. So people start as early as 8 years, why others as late as 19 years? Eh? But anything from 20, if you're not selecting your menses, it means you should do what? Go to the doctor, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So before we even start menstruation, do we know how to take care of ourselves as girls? Let me know. How am I, how, am I, how should I take care of myself as a girl? How am I supposed to maintain hygiene, personal hygiene as a girl? We have to maintain ourselves by bathing regularly, and also, and also, like as a female child, we have many responsibilities at home, like cleaning our home, washing our clothes, and all of that. So as a girl child, I think you should bathe at least three times in a day. You bathe to wash your clothes, and you stay away from dirt. Why do you give us a sound clap? Okay, inside this bath, now you know some people just enter and, and go out. It's true now. Is that how to bath? No. What am I supposed to concentrate and watch very well? Yeah. And also, but how many of us really do it? Why is that so when some people bath, they will do like this? Is it good? No. It means you should concentrate and do what? Wash your private your armpits and your private part very, very well. And when you can afford a shaving beam, it's also good as a girl because of the sweat. You sweat so much, it's good to do what? Clear the hair that in your armpit and your private part as well, all right? This is how to take care of yourself as a girl. Make sure you wash yourself very, very well. Okay, now I'm a girl. I've taken care of myself. No, no, no. Now I am menstruating. How do I take care of myself as a girl that is menstruating? You know now it's not... I mean, something different is happening in my body, right? So how should I take care of myself as a girl that is menstruating? How should I do that? How, 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 how? Okay, I should pad myself. I should not pad, I should just pad myself. Eh? Should I? Okay, fine. Let me not waste so much time. As a girl that is menstruating, I'm supposed to take my bath as often as I can. And then, most importantly, my pad. What and what should I use as pad? She said I should pad myself. What should I use as pad? What are the right things to use as pad? Eh? No, I want, I want it to be an interactive session. I want to know that everybody is full. I want to carry everybody along. Who is answering? What and what should I use as part? Eh? This is on board. When menstruating, you either use sanitary pad or low trees. Or what? Low trees. Low trees. That's a neat wrap. That's a wrapper. But okay. neat one. Okay. Can we give her a sound clap? Please tell us your name. Evelyn Edison. Evelyn Edison. All right, thank you very much. Okay, when I'm menstruating, it means there are some things I can use that are good. Eh? 
and there are some things I use that are not good, right? So one, as I'm menstruating, I can use sanitary pad, eh? I can also use napkins, as she has said, yeah, eh? I can also use, if I cannot buy sanitary pad, and maybe I might not have napkins, I can make reusable pad, eh? Have we seen it before? Reusable pad. This is what it looks like. You can either give a tailor to design for you or ask your mom, right? You can do it yourself, okay? Just so that you don't have to go and ask or beg somebody that will take advantage of you. This is the reusable part, okay? Can we all see it? Yes. Clearly. Can we all see this? Yes. Okay. So now, what I'm trying to do is to talk about how this menstrual hygiene management can affect you as a girl that is schooling, that is your education. Do you know that there are some people who, once they start menstruating, they feel as if they are abnormal, that there's something wrong with them. And this is because it's the people around them, what they have told them, some people once they are menstruating, you cannot cook again. Am I correct? Some people once they are menstruating, you cannot enter your place of worship. Am I correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Some people now, once they are, you are menstruating, they will make you feel as if you are dirty. You cannot come around because you are menstruating. Is that so? But do we know that this also affects your education? There are some people that want to start menstruating, they say, ah, I don't have money for pad. I don't want to go and stay in school. Is that true? And then they'll not go to school. There are some people that will say, ah, I'm menstruating. I cannot play football again. I cannot um, enjoy sports again. Is that true? And then they'll do a this year at home. And there are some people who want to start menstruating, they feel tight. Oh. This boy should come and know that I'm menstruating and they'll start laughing at me. So then it's just people must stay home until I like, finish menstruating, isn't it? And we know that menstruation lasts for how long? Sometimes three to what? Seven days. Some people get to seven days, right? Yes. Some people from three to seven days they are menstruating. So does it mean that for those three to seven days you will stay at home? Eh? So what can you do? Eh? What can you do? By the way, before I go deep inside, you know I was talking about um, how to take care of yourself. Uh, you know that once a girl is menstruating, uh, once she's menstruating, there is something that covers um, the vagina. It's bacteria, but good one, right? This is a girl who is not menstruating. But once she starts menstruating, that's once the blood starts coming out. Um, the bacteria shifts. So if you don't take care of yourself very well at that time, you can get infection, okay? And that infection might cost you your wound. So it means as a girl, you must be extra neat when you are menstruating. If you have been neat, clap for yourself. Then, if you are menstruating, I said you have to be what? Extra neat. Because those bacteria need to give way for the blood to do what? Come out. Eh? They need to give way for the blood to come out. How many of us know our uh, menstrual cycle? That's if you start menstruating today, you can you know when next or how long before your next menstruation. How many of us know that? How many of us know? Okay, even if you don't know, that's why we are here, to show us, eh? Menstrual cycle, eh, is... Menstrual cycle, eh, starts on the first day you start menstruating. I'm not referring to your first menstruation as a girl. No, I mean you started menstruating already. So the first day eh, of your menstruation is the beginning of your menstrual cycle. See you the following menstruation. Eh? For some people, the first day to the day they will start again takes 28 days. Eh? For some other people, it takes 25 days. For some other people, it can take even up to 30, 31, 32, 33 days. Eh? But let's focus on 28 days. Eh? Take it that 
today as we are here now you have started menstruating your menstrual cycle has begun eh so you menstruate for one two three four five days eh that is your menstruation has finished eh it has ended you're not menstruating again so the next thing now that egg that did not fertilize you know menstruation is the egg from your fallop um, from your ovaries eh that comes to your uterus and when it doesn't fertilize it comes out as menstrual blood right uh -huh. good so these are the days of your menstruation once that um flow is out that blood, menstrual blood is out the next thing that happens now it means that this green area shows that there is no egg to be fertilized eh? there's no egg again it has gone out and there's nothing so from here it starts forming again the open that's the egg starts forming again it means that anything from here to here once a sperm touches that egg pregnancy will do it come out right that's what it means eh? that's from day 12 to day 16. are we still together remember i said menstrual cycle begins from the day that what menstruation so we are now on day what 12 of your what menstrual cycle eh? day what 12 of your menstrual cycle you know it's something that happens continuously right every month so now we are on day 12 meaning that your egg is becoming mature it takes just basically five five to six days but here this this place is fully where you can see red on day 14 it is fully matured eh? that means a sperm can give that egg um can fertilize the egg and make it become a baby a child right so from here from day 17 down to day 28 again it means um the uterus is getting thick again eh? and there is you know it has started traveling the egg has started traveling again and it's not seeing anything that's it's not strong again it's, let's say it's now dead because there's nothing no sperm to fertilize it eh? that is why it grew from here so it's now traveling through your fallopian tube eh, to the uterus back and that's what makes it the 28 and it gets here again eh? once it gets here in your uterus it now signals and the fallopian tubes now signal the uterus that ah, there is nothing, no sperm to fertilize the egg. That is why it comes out again as what? As what? As what? I hope you were following you. Yes, uh -huh. Thank you very much. So that is it about the menstrual cycle, right? So I said menstrual cycle is what? The day you begin menstruating, see you what? The following, the following one. Do you know that some people may say twice in a month? Yes. So it's not the following month per se, but the next time you start menstruating again, okay? Let's just leave it at that. Eh? The next time you start menstruating again. All right, we are finished about that one now. We said we can use sanitary pad. We can use what? You can use napkins. Or you can make reusable parts for yourself so that you don't have to go and put your back on the floor and collect money in the hand for what? We know that is prostitution, right? Because you don't have money, you don't have to go and beg somebody that's telling you you are fine, you're fine. What did my what did the boss call you here? Princess. So you don't need anybody to tell you that you are beautiful, alright? Know now that you are a very, very beautiful person, okay? What did I say? No, now I'll be conscious that you are beautiful. You don't need anybody to tell you that you are beautiful, okay? Knowing that you are beautiful, if they tell you, just say thank you and move on with your life, okay? Uh -huh. So if you cannot afford to buy a sanitary pad, please ask some, uh, maybe your mom, or even go to the tailor and say, please, ma, are you still using this piece? Can I please use it? I know they will give you, eh? If they are not using it. Oh God, please, are you still using this material? Please give me, I want to use it. Eh? You can, 
quickly take it and make something that you can instead of begging or not having anything. The things we should not use are one, tissue, because it breaks. And if it breaks, it can get to stand at any time. And again, the tissues we have, they have particles, all right? And those particles, like I said, the bacteria gives you and those particles can enter your uterus and even affect your womb. It might not happen in one day. From continuous use, eh, it will now form an infection. All right? Are we together? That's why some people have cancer. Okay? And maybe some other diseases that even re reproductive um, diseases re related to our reproductive organs, right? So it's very, very good for you not to use tissue. And also cutting wool. Some of us use cutting wool. Are we together? That too is not too good because of the particles. The same reason why you shouldn't use tissue. It's the same reason why you shouldn't use what? It's the same reason why you shouldn't use what? Thank you very much. All right. You know now I've spoken of how when you don't have these things it affects you in school. How can we make you comfortable while you are in school and while you are menstruating? Because you know that, as we've said, this thing affects your education. And it will make the boys feel, because you're not coming to school, it will make the boys feel as if you are not brilliant because you are missing class. Eh? You are not in class when they are teaching a particular thing. For seven days, that's one week. One more week, you don't come to school. It will be difficult for you to catch up. So how can you be staying in school even while you're menstruating? That's one of the reasons why we are here, okay? We are here to um, give you sanitary pads, right? That is one. Another way is this. You can have um, the government to make... Again, there are some people who, when they are in school, they might not have a place to change, so they will prefer to stay at home. Do we have toilets in this school? Yes. And it's functional? Yes. Okay, fine. That is another thing. That is also another thing. No, don't make noise yet. It's also another thing. We would have... The government, because it's a government school, will have to provide a good toilet and running water for you. So that when you are in school, you can easily go and change yourself and clean up yourself, isn't it? Won't you feel comfortable like that? So that is it. We don't want um, that because you are a girl and you are menstruating, you now stay at home and leave your school. We know school is important, isn't it? Yeah. If I didn't go to school, I would not stand here, oh, eh? But I will not be able to speak, all right? But because I've gone to school, I've been privileged to go to school. I also have the privilege of standing here to talk to you people, okay? School is good, okay? You cannot tell how far you will go with education, right? So menstruation shouldn't hinder your education. The government should provide toilet and water for you so that you can change. And then we need to also educate men. The important thing you need to know that menstruation is not a disease. Eh? It's not a disease at all. It's normal. These boys have sisters and sons and They also have more than sisters, isn't it? So why should they laugh at you? I know there are some boys that are like, even girls who say that. Am I wrong? You shouldn't be. And then you now start making the girl feel bad, right? It's not supposed to be so. It's a very normal thing. The same way that they too, they have their own man, not them. All right? We are not here for them yet. Eh? They do they have their own normal things that happen to them because they are boys. Eh? So because you are a girl and you mess with, it doesn't make you less of a human being, okay? So I've said that government should provide toilets, facility and water where you can easily change. They should also educate boys. Boys, so you people are not here, but I'm sure you can hear me from outside. Please stop laughing at girls because they are stained. Eh? You should support them, okay? Okay. So, and also, we can also ask, even the government can also provide pad banks for you people, okay? They can keep somewhere um, a box of pad in your school where if a girl is stained, she can quickly, or if she starts, her menstruation starts and she's, she's in school, she can quickly go to the pad bank and meet whoever is in charge of it and say, ma. I, uh, my period just started with this, I need a stick of pad. And she can easily give you, won't it help you? Won't it help? All right. 
So I think I have spoken enough, and that has brought me to the end of what I came here to say. Is how we have spoken about menstrual hygiene, we have spoken about menstrual cycle, we have spoken about how menstrual um, hygiene management or the lack of it can affect what your education. And we've also spoken about some solutions, right? Yes. So I think that's the end of our talk for now. I'll give room for questions, but not now. Thank you very much. So without wasting time left, I'll be calling on Ma'am Desu Toki to speak to us on something, a very, very important um, topic. How many of us have heard of sexual and gender-based violence before? How many of us have heard of sexual and gender-based violence before? Okay. The few hands I'm seeing up, good. But the hands that are not seeing up, makes it better. It means you will learn something. So please open your ears and hear this. But it's very, very important. Please clap for Mam Toki. Everybody, Hi. see, you know why I don't even, I'm not even happy. Let me tell you the truth. The couple of you are frowning. And you are fine girls over. Fine, fine girls. Why are you frowning now? Uh? Wait, you can't see. You can see our teeth. I've not seen it. See, all of you are looking. Please smile. Let me see you. You are beautiful. Look at the person beside you and say you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Amen. Hey, and that's why we are here today. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to be um, talking to us about sexual violence, sexual abuse. And um, I know that this is something that um, most of us, like from um, when Mam Hilda told us to raise our hands, this is um, so many people have not heard about sexual abuse. And I'm going to talk to us about it today because it is very, very important. Please, those at the back, please, I would love to have your attention. And by the way, I'm going to be asking you questions. If you cannot answer, you just go out gently. Yes, you just walk out because we see there are people outside that want to listen to us. But because all of us are special, we want all of us to benefit from this. And also, if you are hearing me from outside, please, this is also for you. So when we talk about sexual violence, we talk, we're talking about, you know, we have two types of sexual we we Okay, when we talk about sexual violence, we're talking about, you know, when um, a... Okay, let me use rape, for example. It's a form of sexual violence. This is a form, this is a process when a man or a woman, you know, take advantage of another man or an, of another man, woman, girl, boy, or anybody. And this process, you know what they do? When we, when we talk about rape, when a man or a woman inserts, we are not going to use private parts. I know some of us have heard, okay, private parts, private parts. But when we talk about, you know, when you insert, when a man inserts his um, penis in the vagina of a woman without the ladies or the girl or the boy's consent. So this can happen to a boy and this can happen to a girl. This can happen to a woman and this can happen to a man. So it's very, very, very important. And because of the society we are in today, this is something that is happening almost every day. And it is possible that those that you look at, and you know, probably something like that might have happened to you, and you feel like, oh, you are the only one. No, it happens almost every day. And that is why we are here today to educate you, to know when you are sexually, do you understand me? Okay, you know, a form of sexual abuse is, you know, I'm sure that some of you, at some point, you will hear some boys say, oh, see what she's wearing. Look at her breast. Look at her nyash. Look at her this. Have you heard of it before? Yes. Boys have made fun of you before? Yes. Okay, that's a form of sexual abuse. When we talk of, you know, so many people, I have some ladies there with phones. I know some of you have phones. You know, when they send pictures, when they send pornography without your consent, that is an abuse. Do you understand me? Yes. See, okay, I'm uh, sorry, I'm supposed to start with I love saying this. Your body is your body. Do you understand me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. It does not belong to your daddy, it doesn't belong to your mommy, it doesn't belong to any uncle or any auntie. So nobody has the right to touch your body. 
at any point. Even if it's the person paying your school fees, if it is the person feeding you. That's why I said, even your parents, nobody should touch your body without your consent. Do you understand me? And that is why we are here today, because you are very, very, very special. Like I said, the boys outside, you can hear me, I'm saying it again, the boys can be abused as much as the girls are being abused. So, please, when you are going out, when they are telling you, you know, some, some, of, some things people say is that, see, make sure that you are properly dressed. It's good to be, dre like, to be fully dressed, to dress and cover your nakedness, it is good. But it still does not give anybody the right to touch your body. Please avoid uncles and aunties that will be telling you. See, like I said, it's not just the, the boys, the boys, I mean the man that can abuse the girl. Aunties, without aunties, you know, that will take, that will call girls, you know, be touching their body or be telling them, touch me here, touch me, my vagina, touch my breast, touch that one. It's a form of abuse and you should not allow it. So far it is an auntie. That, that's why I'm saying that. That is an abuse. It's also categorized as abuse. So make sure that when things like that or some things like that happen, please don't keep quiet. Do you understand me? What did I say? Don't keep quiet. They can tell you, if you tell somebody, I will, don't keep quiet. Make sure you talk to somebody that you trust because your life is very, very important. If it is not properly managed, even the person that has been abused can go on and start abusing another person if it is not properly managed. What did I say? Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me try an example. Please come. So, let me, for example, this is just an example. Okay, we are, don't let me use you, please. Sorry. Okay, let me, let me use this for example. If this A, let's call this A. Okay, let me use this station. For example, if, for example, God forbid, I abuse Hilda, do you, do you get me? And if Hilda does not go to somebody that she can trust and they help her out, it's possible for her to go to another child and do it. It's not because she wants to do it. That thing, sexual abuse, messed with your brain, messed with your mind. There are times you would do some things that ordinarily you might not want to do. Do you understand me? It's because you don't have an understanding of how to manage it. Do you get? Some people over times, it's not because they want to be abusing children. It's not because they want to abuse their friends. But because they have not gone out to talk to somebody about it. And that is why if adventure. We are not here to condemn anybody. Like I've said before, this thing happens every day. And it happens, funny enough, it happens even at home. Right, you know, right under the, when you say the house is supposed to be safe for you to be, most cases, or so many cases that we've dealt with, some have happened right in the house and the parents might not know. So I'm telling you, if it has happened before, it is not your fault. Do you understand me? It is not your fault. It is the fault of the person that did it to you or the person that is doing it. So don't condemn yourself and say, ah, no. And because that's one of it. That's what, what happens. Guilt comes in when the person has been abused. Please, don't feel guilty. Try to talk to somebody that can help you. This is very, very important. Now, Auntie Hilda has spoken to us about how to, you know, um, take care of ourselves. Do you know if a person is raped or is being sexually abused, like let's use rape, it is possible for the person to carry belly. Do you understand? It is possible. And all of us want to go to school. We want to become very great in life. We want to become this and that. You know, that is when, if it is not, like I'm saying, if it is not properly managed, it can destroy a person's future. And your future is very, very bright and beautiful. Like I always, like I'm happy to even talk to you. That your background, don't even look at your background. Don't look at your background and say, ah, uh, eh, maybe I just want to become a, maybe a pepper person. I'm okay. 
I want to just become a this thing, I'm okay. No, because you are from a particular background does not mean that you should end up having children and raising children in that kind of, you know, um, background. You can do better. Some of us will say, ah, I wish my parents was this, my father was a doctor, my father was this thing. You should also become a doctor that your child will look at and be like, ha. You should become a teacher that your ch child will look at you and say, thank God for my mommy. Do you understand me? Make your, not, don't make just yourself proud, make your parents proud and make, most importantly, make yourself proud. So please, any form of abuse, please report it. Try to talk to somebody. And we are here. If you want to talk to somebody, you can come. We'll be here to listen to you. And please don't be shy. It's just a way to help out. Do you understand me? Hello? Hi. You are quiet on me. No. Uh -huh. So you are going to repeat. Let's repeat my thing. We are supposed to start with it. So we are going to go one, two, three. But when I tell you, 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 you reply back. My body. My body. Can you hear me? Yes. My body. My body. See, the person at the back cannot hear you. My body. My body. Is my body. Is my body. It does not belong to my mommy. It does not belong to my, it belong to my daddy. It does not belong to my daddy. It does not belong to my uncle. Pick a neighbor, let's see very fast. And you have to be Hello? Let's go. My body. My body. Is my body. Is my body. It is not for my mommy. It is not for my mommy. It is not for my daddy. It is not for my daddy. It is not for my uncle. It is not for my uncle. It is not for my auntie. It is not for my auntie. It is not for my friend. Please, if you have a question, just put your hand up. Okay, that means just one question we have, right? All right. Just one question, right? So all this talk, you don't know nothing, you got everything. Please, let's be fast. Don't be afraid. You are here to learn. Me now, I'm regretting those questions that I didn't ask when I was in school. It's fear. And that's one of the things why we don't allow fear to stop you from doing what you need to do. The highest thing is maybe they will laugh at you. Of which I believe they will not, they will not cut one hair from your head. Eh? So don't allow fear to stop you. Okay? If you have a question, ask. We are here to answer you. Eh? Anytime you ask questions, you will not miss road. But if you don't ask questions, you will always will miss your way. Okay? Please, if you have a question, ask. What makes some ladies to mistreat twice the moves? It's the nature of their body. The same way that it's you are nature. that. It's yes. No, sometimes. Mm -mm. It all depends on when your menstruation starts. If you start at the beginning of the month and you have a short cycle, so you will definitely have the chances of menstruating twice. Do you understand me? But for somebody who has a longer cycle, you know we have the 24 days, we have 25 and we have 28 days. And some people 21 days. So if you have a very short cycle, the tendency of you menstruating twice in a month is very possible. 
Because I answer your question. Okay, to make it very brief, if you have a question, just stand up or write it down. If you have a question, stand up so that we'll ask. Hello? Okay, somebody is asking a question, what is masturbation? Masturbation simply means when you are fond of touching yourself. As a girl or as a boy, you like fondling. If you have, if you're a girl, you have, you have breasts. You start fondling with your breast and your vagina. That is what masturbation is. You can masturbate yourself, and then you can masturbate masturbate with someone else. Do you understand me? Okay, we are the. Uh, <laughs> Okay, ma'am. Now what if her menstruation comes the first day and then the second day she doesn't see it again? That means only one time, only one day, two days. As a new person or someone who has started menstruating. Someone who has how long have you been menstruating? Two years ago. It's normal. It takes like three years for a woman's menstrual flow to become steady. So it's normal. Yes, sir. Why is it that for you, ma'am, you can't explain it? Why is it that you have too much influence? Hello, please, silence. Silence. We have what is called PMS. We have the emotional, the emotional part of it and the physical aspect of PMS. The physical aspect is where you have paint on your waist, paint on your tummy. Do you understand me? And the way you can get rid of this pain sometimes is you take very simple painkiller, but you must go to the pharmacy. Like Buscopan can help you. And then you can also do light exercises. Are you listening to me? You do light exercises. And then you can get a water bottle, fill it up with warm water, and then place it on your tummy. That can also relieve the pain. When someone is okay, when someone is menstruating and like rushing like one hour or two hours, is that going to be? He said, "Let me get your question again." Like you are menstruating and then you are menstruating, not less than two hours. Yes, is that a problem? It's okay. At your age, it's still okay. You're not losing blood. Can I tell Manaki? I don't know if you know it. Manaki is the first time a girl begins to see her menstrual. When you begin to menstruate, it takes three years for your menses to normalize. You said sometimes you see your menses this month, and maybe till the next three months, four or five months, you, you'll see the next one. It is normal except when you have slept with the boy. Yes. If you're just starting your menstruation, it is normal. It will take three years. For some people, it must not take up to three years. Like when my daughter started seeing, her own never stops. She started seeing her own like that every month. But for some people, because all our body, our hormones are not the same. For some girls, they will start and it will continue. While some will start this month, it will not normalize until after three years. But if you wait after three years, it does not normalize, then you need to see a doctor. Do you get me? So those of you who are saying it's pregnancy, what do you know about pregnancy? Huh? What do you know about pregnancy? How do we dispose of our parts? Very good question. Very good question. You simply discard your sanitary pad after you use, you know, you roll them and put in a waste bin. But for some people that, I know there are people who don't like to expose their sanitary pad. If you have a pit toilet in your house, you can throw it, but don't put it in a water system. Toilet that you flush, it will block it. 
But for some people, they will tell you they easily burn their own when it's dry. But the best way is simply roll it. After you use, you roll it and they discard properly in the waste bag. So are we done with the question? No, ma, there's a question. It says, what makes that white come out from your vagina? Is it good or bad? There's a white mucus that comes out of your vagina. It's called discharge. The white mucor, it's very normal. When it becomes abnormal, it's when it starts to smell. Every woman has the smoker that comes out of their body. It is very normal, but when you begin to you know, perceive this foul odor, then you know that you have been infected and you need to treat yourself. And please, when you are washing your, your vagina, please don't use soap. Do you use soap? If you use soap, there's a pH level that every woman needs to have that helps her to fight bacteria that are coming. And if you constantly keep using soap, what it does to that pH, it kills those pH. That when, you know, external bacteria comes, it doesn't have the power to fight back. So what you simply do, use water, enough water, and make sure you clean the place properly and dry, make sure you don't leave it wet. Because sometimes when you have your bodies wet, you give it room for bacteria to brood. Do you understand me? I forgot to mention something. For those of us who will be using, or who use um, reusable um, pads uh, and napkins, please, uh, there's a way you take care of it that it will not give you infection. If you are always using a napkin that is wet, that is not very dry, damp, because you are scared of drying it outside, not dry it inside, and it's not dry, you need to use it. You now manage, say, let me manage, and you use it. You continue using it like that, it will give you infection, okay? This is the best tool. If you cannot dry it outside for it to dry very well, eh? Once you put it inside and it's dried, please use hot iron to press it. Do you know why? There are some bacteria that are going to be on that thing that needs to die. Like I said, the mucus that usually protects your vagina gives way when you are menstruating. It means anything can easily enter, eh? Because there's nothing guiding it again. Anything can easily enter and that will cause you infection, right? So if you're using reusable pad and or maybe where you live, you cannot dry it outside. Dry it inside, but make sure it dries. And let it not only dry, please always iron it, okay? To kill the bacteria that is on it, all right? But please, okay. it's very important. See, don't be shy to dry your pants outside. Put your, your sunlight is very, very important. When you're using reusable sanitary pads, please endeavor to sun dry. Because many of us do not have access to light or we do not have pressing irons in the house. Even if you have pressing iron, sometimes when you want the light, you don't get, you don't get it. I hope you all understand. So please, sun dry. Put it in the sun for you to get dry. Because that sun helps you to kill certain germs on it. Do we all understand? And if you are not on your period, please, make sure you don't, don't wear wet pants. Even if it's that, if it's semi-dry, semi-wet, don't wait. Because with time, you see, there are times that some of you, some of us will be going around. Feel like this. You know, it's, your, it's always, you, you'll you be feeling this place is itching you. Uh -huh. It's because at times, maybe you wear one pant and you quickly wash. Pant is not wash and wear. Do you understand? This place, uh, you have to keep it very clean. So your underwear must be dry. And for those that probably you're, you're sensing a foul smell, even when you're not on your period, you can, you know, adopt maybe in the night, or like you can be wearing pants, you have day. What did I say? Maybe when you get home now, you have your bath and change your pants, wash it and dry it and wear another. Don't wear wet one, no. Don't wear semi-dry, semi this thing. Wear a dry pants. Do you understand the absence of that? If you don't have pants to wear after baby when you get home, you can stay, you can wear your, if you have shorts in the house, you can wear your shorts. 
And uh, you know, Santa, I don't know how many of you sleep with fans at night. But do you guys not know right to sleep with fans in the night? Except when you're sleeping. When you go to bed at night, please start sleeping with fans. I can understand, but even with the panties on, if you are not careful, if you are the deep type that sleeps well, they can chip the pants to one side. Spiritual husband. Please, if you stay in a home that is comfortable, please sleep and sleep well. No spiritual husband anywhere. All right, thank you very much. Man. Today, let's count one, two, three, four, and it stops. Four on the one day, what day three? So it continues four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. 25. So my menstrual cycle, I'm using 25 days cycle. So my next message will be 24th of June of the next month. So it's expected eh, you keep this calendar for three months. That three months will be able to help you to have an accurate cycle. You will know if you're 25 or 21, 26 or 28 days. So when you keep it like that for three months, and you write it every month for that three months, you now have an idea if you're a long cycle person or a short cycle person. It will enable you to know when your next message will come. Do you understand me? And the date changes because of the days in the month. Some, some months have 30, some months have 31, right? And February have 28. So it cannot be on the same date the following month. 
Where's the person that says you have questions? This is the last question we are taking. Please, let somebody show us how to wear pads. What the? Okay, why is um, the menstrual blood coming out in lumps? That's thick, thick. Is that what you mean? You remember she said something that the menstruation, eh, generally, if you check, if you are, if you want to count, it's not up to three tablespoons of blood. Three, four tablespoons of blood. Why? Because of the tissues in your body, in the uterus. That that mess. They have not got to biology. Eh? So which one is which one is tissue? You know, sometimes when it comes out in lungs. You know, sometimes your mess, it doesn't flow as frequent as possible. When it wants to come out again, sometimes you notice it comes out in lumps. It's normal. They don't answer you. Clearly. Alright. You are the one that said you want to show us how to wear pads, right? Okay, who is showing us how to wear pads? Please, Daddy. Thank you. We don't have time. Let's be sure that she knows. This, this, this. Maybe everybody can. Can we all see her? Yeah. Can we all see her? A short side. So tell us what is staying in front and what's staying behind. <laughs> There's a ladder, you can see it, which covers the front and the long one that covers the back. If you wear it with the ladder, sorry. If you wear it with the ladder, when you are when you are so you will not be comfortable anymore and it will not pass. It will not it come out from this side. Apart from that, the it will not stick on the pants. Yes. Because there is a gum, yes. It's gum that will come with the pants. So when you're moving it, by the time you Hello. I don't know why you are all shouting. At least you wear pants in your house and you wear pants. So why are you shouting?
little smile, a little faith, a little love, a little kindness, a little hand, a little help can be a miracle. Then the hand touch a life, we can change the whole. Hey.